50 years after the space pioneer Yuri Gagarin visited Britain, the cosmonaut is to be honoured with a statue in London. Well, relations between Russia and the United Kingdom have been strained since the murder here of Russian dissident Alexander Litvinenko and the Kremlin's closure of two British Council offices in Russia in 2008. So, can sculpture or other forms of art ease difficult diplomatic ties? Our culture editor Matthew Kane has this. Admiral Nelson, the Queen Mother and Captain Cook. Now the statues along the Mall are to be joined by an unlikely companion. <laughs> Russian cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin. In 1961 he became the first man to journey into space, making a popular but politically sensitive visit to Britain on his return. Fifty years later his achievement will be celebrated with a new statue. Next month, the statue will be unveiled right here opposite Captain Cook. It's been commissioned by the British Council with the specific aim of easing the tension in diplomatic relations between Britain and Russia. It's quite shocking, isn't it, in London to have something like this? Today, the team from the British Council saw the statue for the first time in Britain. We are, in a sense, creating this relationship with Russia before the politicians talk. David Cameron is going to Russia on, on the 12th of September officially. This is happening beforehand. It's a very good um, introduction to the fact that Russian people and British people are speaking to one another ahead of the governmental and institutional relationships. The statue is part of a wider movement to harness the power of the arts to bring together different countries and cultures. If you don't understand a nation's culture, then you don't understand a nation. You can't put culture in a little box and say, well, that's for when you're in an art gallery, and that's for when you're talking to an artist, that's when you're singing, that's when you're dancing. Culture is part of identity. Identity and politics and diplomacy go hand in hand. Later this year, British sculptor Anthony Gormley will show at the Hermitage Gallery in St. Petersburg, and Tate will send an exhibition of William Blake to the Pushkin Museum in Moscow. But not everyone is convinced about the ability of the arts to promote better understanding between Britain and Russia. There is a very uh, uh, cool atmosphere between us and Russia, which is not serving the interests of either country, uh, and this is an imaginative gesture. But I don't believe that it will give us actual leverage in securing our diplomatic objectives. The government art collection is currently being shown to the public at the Whitechapel Gallery in London, but it can usually be found hanging in British government buildings around the world. One of the chief aims of the government art collection is to promote better understanding and relations between countries. But when art is thrust onto the front line of often tense diplomatic relations, it's inevitable that there'll sometimes be collateral damage. Earlier this year, the British Embassy in Libya was looted and burned. These three paintings have been missing since, almost certainly destroyed. But many believe that shouldn't stop us using the government art collection as a diplomatic tool. A work of art, well chosen, can break the ice, can be a talking point, can also demonstrate something that's very important in diplomacy, respect. Uh, and if you do those two things, then you're more likely to make a difference diplomatically than not. Whether the statue of Yuri Gagarin will make a diplomatic difference isn't yet known. It will be unveiled to the public, both British and Russian, on July the 14th.